Good evening and welcome to State of Business on our television. I'm Nadun Sirivardhana. Let's have a look at the headlines first. Sri Lanka Tourism launches a strong global campaign to boost arrivals next year. Ceylon Chamber organizes a four-corner debate with representatives from all presidential candidates. News in detail. Sri Lanka is gearing up to welcome 3 million tourists next year. A goal aligned with the Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau's ambitious plan to launch a comprehensive tourism promotion campaign. This campaign, set to begin in the second week of September, will focus on key source markets including the United Kingdom, France, Germany, China and India. Sri Lanka tourism officials made this announcement at a press conference held in Colombo last week. SLTPB Managing Director Nalin Pereira said a PR campaign which will run for one year with a budget of 600 million rupees and a digital campaign set to last for six months with a budget of 1 billion rupees. The second phase of the campaign is set to roll out after the winter season, targeting additional markets such as Russia, Australia, Scandinavia, the Middle East, Japan, South Korea, Poland, Italy and the Benelux countries. A budget of 750 million rupees and 450 million rupees has been allocated for the digital and PR campaigns in these markets respectively. Despite the absence of a dedicated tourism minister, the SLTPB claimed that it continues to work under the guidance of the Ministry Secretary and the President. Speaking at the event, Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau Chairman Chalaka Gajabahu predicted that Sri Lanka will experience an influx of over 1 million tourists in the next few months to reach the annual target of 2.3 million arrivals. Chalaka Gajabahu attributed this to the partnerships made with over 200 social media influencers to transform the global image of the country to a positive one after the economic crisis. Our overall target is, as you know, from the beginning of the year was 2.3 million. So last five months, we are expecting another million, million plus uh, to go forward. From the industry, what we hear from the numbers that we are looking at, uh, the European season is coming up. So October, November, December is going to be very heavy month. We hope that the country situation will remain as is because if you remember in 2022 when we took over, all the, the, the travel advisories was on a very high uh, level. You know, it took some time for us to bring those down. And a key note that I want to make is to be very clear in terms of a campaign what we did for the first, uh, for the past one and a half, two years was the seeing is believing campaign. A lot of people do not know this. I want this for you to take down very clearly. We have brought down more than 200 influencers, bloggers and bloggers and media personnel uh, to Sri Lanka to show the country is back to normal from 2022. So that has actually worked in a very good way for the whole industry. And we did that with the private sector support as well. If you look at in all travel indexes, every single travel index, uh, index uh, in, in the world, we are in the top five, whether it's a fortune, the Forbes, the Times of India, uh, and a lot of other travel indexes, all those details are available. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Sri Lanka, in collaboration with the Geopolitical Cartographer, is set to host the Central Asia Forum in Colombo tomorrow. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs said that this event is designed to explore and enhance Sri Lanka's engagement with the strategically significant Central Asian region in a statement released to the media recently. The forum will concentrate on the emergence of new transport and logistics corridors that could significantly impact regional and global trade routes. The discussions will also address the opportunities and challenges involved in strengthening economic ties between Sri Lanka and Central Asian countries. The forum aims to identify synergies that can drive mutual growth and prosperity. This event follows Sri Lanka's recent decision to establish a resident diplomatic mission in Kazakhstan and the conclusion of foreign office consultations with Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and Turkmenistan. The forum will feature contributions from distinguished policymakers, business leaders and experts. Stay tuned, we will return after this commercial break.
Welcome back. The Ceylon Chamber of Commerce is organizing an event ahead of the 2024 presidential election where representatives of the four main presidential candidates will present and debate their economic policies. The Ceylon Chamber said that the debate will take place on August 29th at the BMICH in a statement released to the media recently. Shehan Semasinghe will represent President Ranil Vikramasinghe and Dr. Harsha De Silva will represent Sajit Premadasa. Dr. Harshan Surya Peruma will represent Anura Kumara Disanayaka and Professor Ranjit Bandara will represent Namal Rajapaksa. Moderated by Chairman of Ceylon Chamber Duminda Hulangamua and Board Member of Ceylon Chamber Kasturi Sellaraja, the debate will run for one and a half hours. It will begin with each representative outlining their candidate's key economic policies, followed by a moderated Q&A session that will critically analyse each party's economic vision. The 16th Annual General Meeting of the Indo-Lanka Chamber of Commerce and Industry was held in Colombo recently. The Ceylon Chamber said that the event was marked by the presence of High Commissioner of India Santos Jha as the chief guest. In his address, High Commissioner Jha emphasised India's significant role as Sri Lanka's largest source of tourism, principal trade partner and leading contributor to foreign direct investment. He underscored the importance of focusing on medium and long-term investments that will foster sustained mutual growth between the two countries. At the AGM, M. Raguraman was re-elected as the president of the ILCCI. In his remarks, Raguraman highlighted the strong partnership between India and Sri Lanka, particularly during the challenging times when India provided 4 billion US dollars in emergency assistance along with essential food and medical supplies. The Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, along with its member companies, played a prominent role in representing Sri Lanka at the BIMSTEC Business Summit held in New Delhi recently. The summit provided a platform for discussions on regional economic cooperation within the Bay of Bengal Initiative for multi-sectoral technical and economic cooperation. During the special ministerial plenary, High Commission of Sri Lanka to India, Shenuka Senaviratna, emphasised the importance of greater economic integration within the region. She advocated for the establishment of a BIMSTEC free trade agreement as a means to drive regional prosperity and enhance economic collaboration among member countries. This delegation engaged in a dedicated country session focusing on key industries such as food processing, pharmaceuticals and logistics. The pharmaceutical sector was also highlighted with discussions centering on expanding Sri Lanka's role in the healthcare value chain. The logistics center was recognized for its potential in special economic zones and multimodal transport solutions showcasing Sri Lanka's strategic location and skilled workforce. Stay tuned for the stock update. Trading at Colombo Stock Exchange ended on negative notes today. The old share price index dropped 9.46 points to close at 11,494.61 and the S&P SL20 dropped 0 0.69 points to close at 3,300.16. The turnover was 0 0.5 billion rupees and over 21 million shares were traded. Up next are Forex rates. That's all our news for today. For this and more, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook. Take care and good night.